Okay, well, look, delighted to say now we have the, the new Hurler of the Year, Aaron Galan, on the line. Aaron, how are things? You've had a busy weekend. Not too bad, no, lads. How are you getting on? Good, good. We were just saying, Friday you were named Hurler of the Year for the first time. Saturday, your uh, your girlfriend, she was up at the awards for the ladies football. And then Sunday, you're kicking soccer for Creve Celtic and scoring a goal. So <laughs> it's been all happening to you. Yeah, long weekend. Um, it was enjoyable anyway. It's been a crack going back playing the soccer, so... Just trying to get a, get a bit of a run around. I think I played maybe the last 25 or 30 minutes, so that was enough for me on Sunday. But no, I was trying to get back out in the field and do a bit of something. What was your goal like? Was it a scruffy one or were we talking top corner? Oh, it was a toe, toe poke into the bottom corner. <laughs> we'll take that, we'll take that. Michael, do you want to jump in? Yeah, Aaron, would you have played much soccer growing up? And, and you boys are very good at doing other things in your off-season as well. Garod scored a deadly goal, didn't he, last year, playing soccer for someone as well. Uh, number one, would you have played much soccer growing up and you kind of get, a, you're afforded a bit of latitude to do other things in the off-season as well outside of Hurling by all accounts? Yeah, and look, that's important too. It's no harm to kind of change things up a bit. Um, it keeps keeps us fresh anyway. Um, growing up, I suppose I would have played a small bit, yeah. I already started off playing here with the, the club in Partick as well. Then played a small bit down the road in Mungret. Um, that kind of all came to a halt then when you were 15 or 16, but... No, I enjoyed the soccer. No, I do like it. I must say. Were, were you? Very, um, Tom Morrissey well, was talking the other day, uh, Aaron, about how he enjoyed the fact that he played loads of different sports and then focused on one. Would you have been the same? Like, if could you imagine if you just played hurling all your life? Shall we say it's kind of good to be exposed to other things as well, and then just pick what you want to do. Maybe going forward, maybe fifteen, sixteen. Yeah, look, and I suppose that exposure it, it, it is it's important. Like you know, you you kind of have plenty of time then to make up your own mind of which one you want to give a real rattle to. And, um, yeah, it is. Look, when we were younger, we, we played everything, a bit of soccer, a bit of golf even. Um, I think I tried rugby for a couple of weeks too, but um, I wasn't the best at that, so I left that off fairly, fairly soon. But, no, look, for any young fellas or girls growing up, it is important to kind of try it on and see which one suits best. And when you were playing soccer under eight, were you on the same teams as Keane Lynch, who, of course, you know, he had trials with, wasn't it, St. Kevin's, or he was playing with them. Like, he was a really promising soccer player. I would have played one year with him in Mungret. Um, but yeah, by all accounts, Keane was absolutely unbelievable. But I'd say whatever that man does, he's going to be good anyway. So um, yeah, he was he was at the top of the game uh, for our age when he was playing soccer. He was up in Dublin. A good, I think he spent maybe three or four years up there. So um, no, and as I said, look, he can try his hand at anything and he'd be 10 out of 10. Yeah, and in terms of the golf as well, I'm sure he played out at a dare manner a few times. Is it, is it ready for the Ryder Cup? It's mad. Like I'm living here in Patrick's Well, and it probably takes us five or six minutes to go back to there. And it's like being in a different country when you're back there. You know, it's just it's out of this world. Um, and yeah, look, we've been lucky enough to play there a couple of times. So we're very privileged, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell us about your weekend? Just the All Stars, and the the moment your name was read out, was it shock? Was it you know because you know we've kind of felt that you'd done enough to get one at this stage. Like, what was it like that moment? Um, it was, it was a, bit, a bit surreal to be honest. Um, there's two dogs gone mad here now. Sorry, I'm here. <laughs> um, I know. Look, there was great excitement. I lost a couple of days leading up to it for myself, for my family. Um, and then when the name is actually kind of read out, you're like, Genie, this is actually this is real. Like, um, but look, I suppose it's not something you would ever set out for at the start of the year. Um, but then obviously, kind of when you're when you're nominated. When you're one of the three nominees and you're up there, you kind of you kind of want to win it. So, no, it was a nice feeling. Look, and it was brilliant for my family, brilliant for my club. So, I hope they all had a bit of, I suppose, excitement and satisfaction out of it. Would there be much talk, Aaron? Like during the year, like I don't know, we, we'd often be saying, "Oh, he's in hurler the year form," or "Oh, X or Y will definitely get an All Star this year." Is that something that ever comes into your head during the season, or is it something that you kind of have to keep out of your head because? I remember Kevin McLaughlin saying in 2012, he had a lot of people saying, oh, you'll be an all-star this year, you're playing brilliant. And during periods of games, he said he'd nearly start thinking about it. I need to get another score here and thinking about an all-star. Is that something that comes into your head at all during games or do you have to kind of bat that to one side? Myself, personally, anyway, I don't think so. Um, that's, just, that's just the way I am. Like, um, if I was thinking like that, it would, I suppose, distract me more than anything. And I suppose like during games and throughout the year, you have so many other things to be thinking thinking about and what you need to be doing and how you can impact the game in certain ways. So it's definitely nothing that comes into my head anyway. I, mean, I, I don't know, do other lads think the same way or do they be thinking about it or what? But 
definitely not for myself anyway. We had uh, Kieran Carey on the show a number of times. Actually, he was at one of our coaching clinics there about a year ago. And he was saying about working with you previously with the club. Now, he's obviously not trying to take credit for your success, of course not. But he was saying that he would have done a bit of work with you in terms of the high ball. So that, you know, he was saying like, you know, like as a player, sometimes you can be worried about getting the slap on the back of the head. But he said he was doing a drill with you whereby high ball a grin, he'd tip you on the back of the helmet just to get used to it. It's, it's, how do you recall that? I know, look, it's spot on, the, the, the exact way you're after calling it out there. Um, and, like, no better man to be learning from only Kiran. Um, like, still in our, in our eyes, an absolute legend of the game. So any any nuggets that you can get from him, you're going to you're going to take him on board as much as you can. But, yeah, I think it was maybe 2015, it was Kiran's first year over us with Patrick Swell. And I would have been 19 or 20 or that way. A skinny little young fella, I was playing half hour at the time, so. And I said during the week, you have to be somewhat of a target if you're, if you're in the half hour line. And to be honest, I didn't really know what I was doing to kind of try and catch a ball. But you now I looked around, pulled me aside there a couple of times. I went through a few small things. And I suppose I just kept working on it over the years. And luckily enough, it's paying off so far. Yeah. Mm. Just on, on, on the high ball, Aaron, it's probably something that's not maybe gone out of the game, but it's, we don't see maybe as much of it as before. Is that something that you continuously are practicing now the whole time? Like it is, it's a great weapon for an inside man to have now. Come if it comes in high or low, but the lads kind of know. I'd say at different stages, even if they're under pressure, if we get any sort of a ball in here, you're going to have a chance. Like so, it's people would say it's like it maybe got a bit old school, but geez, been able to catch a ball in around the edge of the square. There's nothing like it. Like one catch, wrong side of your man, and it's in the back of the net. It's a huge asset to have. Yeah, look, and it's probably my favorite part of the game is trying to win clean ball or trying to, to tr- trying to win puck outs or anything. Um, I suppose to it spares you run into the corner flag every every couple of minutes. Is that it, you know? um, no, but look, as I said, it's probably myself. I'd say it's probably the most important part of my game. And um, so it's just, I suppose, a, a skill that I'm continuously trying to hone and improve on. And look, I suppose maybe tr- during the year with Limerick and if we're playing matches or whatever in house matches, they're the only games I can catch a ball in because I suppose the lads know me inside out and they know what side to be on and don't leave me in behind them. So. That can get kind of frustrating, but then when you go into a match against a different county or a different club team and it pays off and it works, you know, you're over the moon then. Mm. Who's the best man? Uh, I suppose he's going to ask you who's the best man in the air. Yeah, who's the best man to play your hand in training (laughs) or make sure you don't catch it? Barry Nash, 100%. Yeah, I'd say in the last couple of years that we've been playing together, I've never in my life got a high ball over Barry, so... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> hey, what, what was it like hanging out with uh, David Clifford I suppose briefly you would have had to do a photo call together after getting the awards what, what sort of mood was he in? It was cool to be honest like to be fair to him like he's probably going to go down as one of the best if not the best footballers ever and like I wouldn't have known him at all I would have never I would have met him probably briefly before but I suppose we spent an hour or two together and just chatting away just a sound sound fella and um, so down to earth like for him to win two footballers of the years back to back, you know. And then come out there yesterday and score twelve or thirteen points in the county final. So it just says enough about the men. Mm, yeah, it definitely does. I I, th- I think you want um Michael you wanted to ask about like previous times and like something through with Darrow Donovan, I think you wanted to ask Michael. Yeah, I don't even know if you're aware of this, Aaron, but I think you had been let go of the Limerick panel by John and maybe John's first year and yourself yeah. and Darrow were swapping freeze, I think, for Mary I and uh Jamie Wall was making a call on who was going to hit the freeze and Dara says that he kind of said said it to Jamie that Aaron should be hitting the freeze. He's better at him and he's just after been let go from Limerick. Um, are you aware of this? Because that was kind of a little, maybe a trigger that probably that campaign, if it's given, probably got you back in with Limerick by all accounts, did it? And it's your graph has been ever on the up ever since then. Oh yeah, definitely. 2017, the Fitz campaign in. Um, like 100% that was the only reason I got called back in with Limerick that year. Um, so I was grateful to be part and look I was lucky we had an unbelievable team that year like we'd like Sakeen Dara Sir Rich English then you had Ronan Maher Colm and Gellin you know like massive massive names and they had a couple of years um, county experience under our belt already so I suppose it was just good timing for me to get in with such a talented team and I suppose had a, a couple of good games and then thankfully got the, the call off John to come back in again but um, that story about Donovan I don't know I never heard that before no <laughs> Mm. Yeah, no, Jamie Wall actually said it as well. Yeah, he said he Derek came up and said it to him on the slide. You were both kind of hitting freeze. And he said, let Aaron have the freeze. 
basically basically like in a nice way that he needs him maybe a bit more than I do. And that obviously maybe it helps your confidence as well. Um and that campaign got you back in. Something that, that I just as you were talking there, I was just thinking, what was the phone call like from John to say that you were dropped off the panel? I can't imagine that was too nice. Um, no, obviously, look, I suppose whenever you get kind of a taste to be in with a, a county senior pen, you know, you want to stay there for as long as possible. Um, so I came in the winter there after we won the county with Partish Will in 2016. So I probably had maybe nine or ten weeks of training in there. And look, sure, I wasn't up to speed at all. I wasn't good enough to be there at that time. Um, the panel was still still very strong at that time. So, look, I suppose it was obviously very disappointing to be let go. Um, but look, I, I didn't hold any grudges against John Rent. He probably made the right decision, to be honest. Did you transform physically a bit as a result of that and realise I need to do X, Y or Z to get up to speed here? Oh, you had to, sure. And look, even again, going back to that campaign we had with Mary I, um, as I said, the names I, I listed off there, like they were all on county panels for a couple of years and I suppose they've been exposed to proper strength and conditioning training and all that and how they looked after themselves and the food they were eating and the recovery and all that goes with it. Um, so just being able to see that firsthand and, you know, kind of a light go off in your head and say, right, this is what I need to do if I want to ever get there. So I suppose it's a good learning curve for me. Mm. This is a slight change of topic, just in terms of like the, I don't know if you've seen, it was talked about at, at the award ceremony the other night. So the, the ring fencing of Laurie Maher counties where they won't have a league and they can't get promoted if they don't have more than maybe five out of hurling things. I want to ask you, because obviously you're, you're the new hurler of the year and whatever, and like lads deserve an opportunity to play hurling no matter where they are. And considering the pittance it will cost, it seems incredibly harsh that you cut these lads' season in half, really. Yeah, look, and I suppose I, I don't ever go into these things too much, but like off the top of my head, it's, it's like my own opinion is definitely wrong. Um, I know the, t- the teams in those divisions are probably not playing at the same standard as us, but like there's no doubt that they're training still five or six nights a week and working as hard as they can. So I don't know. I just can't see the sense in it. And you know, it's not a way to kind of to promote the game. You know, like we're all big GAA people. We love the hurling, the football. Like we want to see as many people playing. I suppose the game that we love. And so I just don't think it. It just doesn't sit right, really. Mm, yeah for sure and i suppose then just i, I told you i was going to ask you about the the matches yesterday so bally gunner beating napierschig for a finish like it was one nine to, to 16 points this bally gunner team's unbelievable like through that game did you ever think that napierschig were going to be able to turn this around sure like to have it in them to be fair to them you know we've seen it in the limerick championship so much over the last couple of years so like you'd never write them off to be fair to them they are a brilliant team and it was a tough one for us to lose against them a couple of weeks ago, but I suppose they were the better team in the day, so they deserved it. But I suppose to touch on Belly Gunner, like they've been on the road a long, long time now, and I suppose they know their game plan inside out, and they're so well driven. So, you know, it is hard to kind of knock them off their perch as well. I remember we played them in 2019 in the Munster, I don't know, it was a quarter final or semi final. But we were, for a finish, like we were now running, running around after shadows, like they were just sipping the ball around. and like just 10 out of 10 knew exactly what they were doing even the lads coming on they just slotted in seamlessly so look and i suppose like for any club team out there i suppose that's the goal like you want to kind of like you want to be, kind of replicate what they're doing i know that's obviously it's very hard because they're on such a good run but i suppose like to win with your club it's massive like john you know, it's probably one of the best feelings i've ever had in my whole life those like we've only two county medals so if we were to able to add another one you know just be magical on together so hopefully we can do it for the next couple of years. Just Aaron, there's a there's an obvious link between Limerick and Bally Gunner, and that's Shawnee O'Donnell. Can you just talk to me a bit about what he brings to your setup and what he brings to the table? By all accounts, I would say Bally Gunner are a similarly well oiled machine as ye are. What does he bring to the table? Uh look, and I've no doubt that Shawnee has him well driven and I suppose the best compliment you can kind of give Shawnee is he keeps things so simple. Like it doesn't complicate it for anyone, so then everyone's crystal clear on exactly what they have to go in the field. So, no, look, he's just brilliant, and I suppose he's a huge weapon for any team to have. Um, any particular like nuggets maybe he would have given you? I remember Shano asking you in a show before when, when did the penny drop about uh baiting the ball into the ground for goals? It took long enough, no mind you. I was getting enough views <laughs> from back to training after it, so um. No, but look, I suppose, like, even growing up, like, I would have never, ever played in the full forward line, so, 
like 2018 was my first time ever playing inside the full forward line. So like I wouldn't have scored many goals and I would have always played kind of half forward line mainly. Like I wouldn't be scoring many goals out there. And so I suppose when I came into the full forward line, it was kind of a new aspect of your game that you kind of had to work on. And look, it took me a bit longer than others now. I was going for the top corner the whole time. But <laughs> like the soccer yesterday, into the bottom corner is grand. As long so, as they so, hit the net or cross the line, that's all that matters really. It doesn't, yeah, doesn't yeah. have to be spectacular. No. So, one thing I wanted to ask you was, you know, Nicky Quaid's obviously a brilliant goalkeeper for Limerick, and we don't want to rule your brother out of the conversation because he's been brilliant for Patrick as well. But do you think Shane Dowling has an opportunity to come into the reckoning as a as an inter county goalie? He's done very well for the He Made some great saves yesterday again. He has done well, yeah. And I suppose like he'd have Shane to drop the Sunday game though. <laughs> um like Shane, he knows the game inside out, to be fair. Um, and I think that's kind of important for goalies these days. Like they have to kind of control the game um, at certain times. If the other team are hitting a purple patch, the goalie kind of has the ability to slow it down a bit. Um, and Shane has all that. Um, definitely, look, he is good enough, one hundred percent. Thankfully, I, I'm not picking um, any panels or any teams of who's coming in or anything like that. Because, like, even the rest of Limerick, like, there's loads of hurlers. Like, and I suppose. That they are they are putting their hands up and I'd say that they're looking at the success over the last couple of years and thinking, Gee, you need to know what I might want a bit of this. So you know, like there's probably ten or fifteen lads that really stood out in the, the senior championship this year. So look does anyone's game really. Mm, yeah. And I was just uh, I was said to Michael before about, you know, Cahill O'Neill is someone who come to mind there when you talk about excellent players and he said to bide his time and with the U C D fresher team we had a couple of years ago, like he just went to town and destroyed us. Like how good is this lad? Like his, I'd say the GPS is broken with him. Uh, he's brilliant, to be fair to him. Um, technically, absolutely unbelievable. I have him up there technically with, I'd say, the same skill set as Keane, to be honest. Um, and the work that that man puts on off the field, like just to get himself in perfect condition. Um, he's probably one of the fittest lads there. He's probably one of the biggest and strongest lads there now as well. Obviously, he's the hurling. The whole place knows that, so... I have no doubt, no doubt that that Cahill is going to be kind of champion at the bit to get on the team and start more regularly. You know, but look, he's still having a massive impact on the team, whether that's starting or coming on, and mm. I think he's happy to do that. And look, we're just delighted to have Cahill in our panel, anyway. Yeah. Mm. Would you have had an opportunity to watch the Kildare and Clonlara game yesterday? I know you were playing soccer, so maybe you missed some of it. I actually didn't because Roisin was she's playing Camogie at Newcastle West, and they were playing the Munster Club semi final against Sarsfield. So. I have to watch that one or else I'll be in trouble. And how did that go? <laughs> what, what do you like watching on? Like, are you the nervous sort of watching on? Uh, not really, no, sure. Like, you can't impact the game when you're only watching on, so just try and chill out. It's not I'm getting too worked out over it, or too worked up over it, sorry. I'd say every night of the week, you must be out between her playing and, and you playing. <laughs> yeah, it's tough going now, especially when the county season kind of kicks off again, you know. Um, <clears throat> But we got it. We got two dogs there a couple of months ago, so it's kind of t- tough work now. If if I'm training on a Monday and she's at home with her by herself, or then she's gone on the shoes and I'm at home, it's like having two children. <laughs> <laughs> what type of dogs are uh, Aaron? A cockapoo and a black Labrador. Lovely. I've a I've a Shih Tzu lying down asleep here by, by me. I'm just waiting for her to step back in here. Um, just quickly on on Friday night. Um, like it's a remarkable thing. Patrick Sweller having after having three different hurlers years in consecutive years and four hurlers years in six years. Like, what's the kind of outpouring of emotion and celebration been like in the club? Like, it's it's I like I don't even know if that'll ever be done again. It's a remarkable thing, really. It is, yeah, and it's, I suppose it's nice to be part of it. You know, um, it's like the people around personal, they're, they're just over the moon, like, and I suppose to be able to bring some sort of enjoyment to them, whether it's winning those awards between the three of us and bringing them back home or whether it's winning mat- Munster matches with, with Limerick or All-Ireland, you know, and just the support we get off everyone around the village is just unbelievable. And so like, I'm delighted I'm from Patrick's Well. Um, it's an absolutely brilliant club and a brilliant place. Um, everyone gets on with each other. Everyone supports each other. So I suppose just to be able to add to that positively, you know, it, it, it's special enough, to be honest. When mm-hmm. you see what it means to the people of Patrick's Well and even the people of Limerick, 
you know, people often talk about, you know, oh, maybe the same hunger won't be there. Does that like kind of light a fire under you when you see what it means to people even having conversations? I can't imagine the conversations lads are having with you thanking you for this or that. Like, does that kind of, do you ever reflect on that and just think, Jesus, this is why I do it. This is the enjoyment, whatever about the enjoyment I'm getting, but the, the enjoyment I'm giving other people, like, does that kind of light a fire under you even going into 2024? It does, of course, like, and I suppose if you can give kind of a small bit of happiness or positivity to anyone, you know, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Um, like, even, like, my family, like, my mother and father go to the matches, but my nana kind of goes to the odd one, and then she get nervous and stay at home. That's my two nanas. Um, but just, like, coming up to matches, like, a week or two before matches, the excitement that they have, like, they think about nothing else, whereas we'd be trying to think about anything else other than the matches. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anytime you meet them, then you're getting the same questions, you know, um, <laughs> But no, it's nice, the excitement, and then when you win, you win, like, they're thrilled and just over the moon, so, no, look, and it's great to be able to experience all that with them. Mm. Can I ask you about, you know, playing as an inside forward and, you know, um, adapting to life in there, because you said you were a half forward a lot earlier on in your career. Like, there was a video last year of Conor Cleary and you kind of more or less doing circles around the square or whatever. Is there any advice that you would give a young forward who's looking to sort of improve their games as an inside man? I think an important thing for me, and it still is, is is the depth that I keep. Like sometimes I nearly stand on the goal line with the goalie, um, and like I tried to say it to the lads at Patrick's Well this year, there was myself, Tom O'Brien, and maybe John Kirby in, inside the full forward line, and I try to always play myself as the, the deepest person in. But like the lads did kind of, and I was the same a couple of years. You kind of go out to feed and out to feed and out to feed, but then you're cutting off space yourself. Whereas like if you're in as deep as possible and you almost go laterally rather than out the field you know like you're just making acres of space for yourself and then I suppose being lucky enough to have the likes of Donovan or Declan or I suppose Dion or Coil to like, put perfect passes into where the space is you know I suppose they have the easy job then like after that you know all I have to do is like, get and turn around and shoot but um, the ball the ball off the ledge is, is A1 so. how, how patient do you have to be Aaron? Oh Gene you have to be patient <laughs> Um, look, it's, it, I suppose it's not too bad with Limerick, maybe because it's, it's kind of almost built into us. We all, we know exactly when to go. We know we almost know like the lad that gets the ball. We know what he's going to do with it before he does. So um, it's not too bad with Limerick. But I suppose coming back into a club team and you haven't been there for a couple of months, it takes a bit, get, a bit of getting used to, and then you kind of have to communicate with the lads out the field. Say, look, I'm going to run here whenever you get the ball. It's on. So. It just takes a bit of organising, but genie patience is a big one anyway, and I wouldn't be the best man for it. <laughs> Eamon Kelly was, was talking to us about the injury you picked up during the county final, which I'm sure hampered you to some degree, or at least, at least you were playing during pain. We thought maybe you'd be out for a while, but you're back playing soccer, so you're obviously okay. It, it wasn't too bad, no? No, I was grand. I got it checked out a couple of days after, so Mark, the physio at Limerick was happy enough for me to go and play soccer for a while anyway, so can't be too much wrong with it. And is it up front you always playing soccer? Up front, yeah. Yeah. yeah, target man again. Someone said yesterday, I was like, Luke Hecker, the ball was coming up and just hopping off me and bouncing everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> hey, come here, to Aaron, with a question in there about the size of your hurl. What uh, what size what size hurl are we talking? Um, it's a spoon, Michael. It's not a hurl. It's, it's a spoon. kind of like a spoon. All right. What size are we talking and what's the reasoning behind the, the, the height of it? I actually don't think it's that short, to be honest. I was always using a 33 up till this year. And um, I actually broke two of my hurlies in training one night, and I had no spare hurley then. House and private, I, house private for a couple of days after that. <laughs> no, I think the slitter was too hard and cracked it or something. <laughs> but Adam, Adam English actually was in training the same night, so I used his hurley, and it was one from Ronan Maher. So I was like, Gene, they're lovely. So I actually got onto Ronan after it, and again, I would have known him to a college. So I got a couple of hurlies off him, and I've been using them since, and their size 34, so they're not too small. So I love to hear that. A Limerick, man, get, a Limerick man getting his herds in Tipperary to, to hurt a Tipperary man that he could be marking in a game. I love to hear that. The other lad is absolutely cringing over here beside me. <laughs> you're going to have to drop him for this. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what, um, Adrian McGrath's asking a question here. Could you ask Aaron about his path to where he is? Because it would be good for any young kid who isn't a superstar straight away to hear it. And as a Clareman, he wished that you had lost hope, but here you are, Aaron, anyway. Um, look, I suppose only for the people that I had around me, whether that was my family at home or being part of just a brilliant club, you know, you were constantly getting supported and I suppose constantly getting encouragement and 
look, when you are getting, I suppose, words of wisdom and like that, after like Securon or Gary Kirby, or even meeting all the lads again, like Phil Venice or Richie Venice, you're walking down the road or anything, um, just a small word of them or like keep going or just a small bit of encouragement, you know, give you great confidence. And like, again, they're a huge credit also to go to Jamie inside Mary I, Jamie Wall. Um, I was delighted and I suppose lucky that I crossed paths with him at the time because like, he made me captain of Mary I when I was in fourth year. And that was my first time ever being a captain of any team. So like that really kind of instilled a bit of confidence in me. And I suppose Jamie kind of taught me that he thought I was a great player and why. And like small things like that kind of stick in your head and you do get great confidence from that. And I suppose it kind of transfers onto the field. In and if you're playing well and you're happy, or if you're enjoying it and you're happy and you're full of confidence, you're about to play well. With a question about Jamie there, Aaron, wondering whether he would ever be involved maybe in inter county management. You were well exposed to him. Do you see that potentially something in his future? Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah. He definitely has it in his locker. Um, I'd rate him very highly, to be honest. Look, we've been very lucky, I suppose, throughout our career. We've had brilliant coaches, and I'm sure Jamie won't mind me saying this, like, but no one's going to be Paul Knurk. Um, but Jamie be a close second or third, I suppose. And like, even lads here in the club, the likes of Natella Brady and them, we're just blessed to have them and they're brilliant coaches and they brought us all on leaps and bounds. So, look, we're very thankful for him. And as I said, to be able to cross paths to him, it is special. But Jamie, I'd say it's probably something he envisages is happening down the line and it's maybe something that he's looking forward to. But he definitely has all the ingredients and he had to go and get success wherever he goes. Now we played um, with Kula, a challenge match against your team once or twice. I don't know if you remember oh, yeah. one day. Matty Kenny did this tactic where every five minutes he was changing our two inside forwards, subbing them on and off, and Jamie was going nuts on the sideline. I don't know if you remember that. I don't remember that. No, I do remember playing against Kula once, all right. It was up in... Abbottstown. Yeah. I don't remember that, though, the forwards changing every five minutes. So. Oh, yeah, he was going nuts. <laughs> I could understand afterwards as well. Uh, but anyway, look, that's... Uh, I'd say an unremarkable game otherwise. An unremarkable game otherwise. Yeah, Only yeah. talent match. Um, so just in terms of like, have, have people started mentioning five in a row already? I'm sure not. None of the players are anyway, but I'm sure yeah. the likes of ER and other people in the media, like, you're going to be talking about that, but I'm sure, obviously it, it's going to be out there and obviously people are going to be talking about it, you know, I suppose even last year, the four in a row was a narrative that were there, the year before it was a three in a row and you know, I suppose we're kind of getting used to, you know, you kind of have to acknowledge it, but just don't shy away from it at the same, same time, you know. Um, the one thing that it's not going to do any of uh, is stop us from going back and training as hard as we can. So, look, that's kind of all I have to say. And it's, you know, it's, a, it's a long, long time right now at this stage. Do you pay much attention to media stuff that's going around, going around the media? Do you keep your eye in on it a bit or do you just kind of stay away from it? I probably would know if there was, like, on other teams or other matches, but not on ourselves, really. No, I don't think it'd be any benefit. Hmm. And are you obsessed with the game, do you reckon? Obsessed just with the game. Yeah, like you yourself improve. Like, you know, would you be out pucking ball off the wall all day, every day? Probably wouldn't, to be honest. No. Um, well, not now, anyway. Get in there. Get in. <laughs> <laughs> Roar and shout another day. Like, um, no, like, I suppose, like, when you're training five or six nights a week, you know, you're getting enough hurling in there, and the other one or two days you're at home, you kind of want to be relaxing and recovering. So, um, maybe over the next couple of weeks now, I probably won't touch a hurley till be a week or two before we come back but I suppose it is nice to get that I suppose the freedom from it and come back fresh then I think Dermot said he left his hurls in his parents house in the off season what like is it important to kind of take a bit of a break because if you're always kind of at it maybe you start flagging then around May June the, the enthusiasm maybe you seem to be very good at parking it and then when it's back it's back and you're all in but you take the couple of months off and really enjoy it and let the hair down. A lot of boys go travelling. I think Daryl Donovan said he was in Japan. Boys go different places. You were in Barbados. So go on. You, you, it sounds like you have a Daryl Donovan story to tell. There's, there's too many stories to tell about that, man. So, <laughs> oh, I don't know. He's a guest man, that's to be fair to him, Gene. He'd keep you fair entertained now. <laughs> yeah, on, well, he entertained, the, he entertained the whole country a couple of days after the All Ireland final this year with his Gucci yeah. wear. He had that great picture with, with Willie O'Dea as well, yeah, with the, yeah, like yeah. the speed gun. Oh, he was in good form, to be fair to him now. Yeah. Mm. Um, we One final question then. What are the names of the dogs one trick pony wants to know? So Bruno's the Labrador and Archie's the Cockapoo. Ah, very good, very good. Well, look, Aaron, you've been absolutely brilliant with your time. Uh, we enjoyed the chat. Hope you did too. And uh, best of luck with the season ahead, except against the oh, Prairie, obviously. <laughs> that was well. Cheers, Aaron. Good man. See you later. Thanks, Emil. Good man.